Hi, everybody. So sorry for the delay in getting on tonight, but we had some technical difficulties that we had to iron out. So thank you for being patient and thank you for the ones that have joined or are joining. I hope that uh, we see some viewers come on. That'd be real fun tonight uh, because we really have planned for this to be interactive. So um, I'm really hoping that that you can join us. And thank you. Thank you for tuning in to Chat with Deb. For those of you who are seeing me for the first time or joining for the first time, I'm Debbie Leno. I'm also known as the Inner Peace Coach. I am also the, the founder of Luna Life Wellness and Coaching and the creator of the Ageless Woman Facebook page. And as you might have guessed, one of my favorite things to do is to chat with women from all over that have uh, fun and interesting stories on subjects that will hopefully empower our viewers. And that's what uh, this, that's what my, my page is all about. And that's what my interviews are about. It's just empowering you to, to just be your best, be your best selves and to just forge through uh, circumstances that come up in your life. So I just want to tell you a little bit about my guest, who is Carol. Lovell Calvert. She's of Bell Rising and she joins us from North uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. And just to let you know just a little bit more about her, she is an author and an energy medicine coach, light coach, medical Reiki master, creator of the first light retreat and spa in the USA, licensed spiritual health coach. And lastly, she is the founder of bellrising.org. And her current five year project is one million women turning on their silver linings. Carol is not your average older person. I think you might've figured that out by now. <laughs> she is not someone just waiting around for time to pass. She is outside living it. She also has a flair for developing women's circles and her latest is called Sterling Silver Sisters, which I am a part of. Thank you. Mm -hmm. the, Thank the, you. <laughs> yes, the evolved woman and is a self-described celebration of redefining beauty to include silver hair and lots of laugh lines. Carol spent two years as the brand ambassador for Faces of Silver. It's, it was a two year project photographing beautiful silver women from across the world created by the internationally published photographer, Ben Winkler, and it's now a book and a movement. Carol created a companion book, which is titled, I am not beautiful like you, I am beautiful like me. And it's it's, it's just such a sweet, sweet book. I have it. Um, I should have gotten that out right here. I, I do have it here, Carol. I wanted to show it to people. And- um, Here you go. Ah, you've got it. Oh, thank you. Yes, I don't have my hands on it at this moment. I should have had it ready. Uh, anyway, this statistic really made me sad, Carol. Only 4% of women believe that they're beautiful. And we want to talk to the 96% who are, in fact, gorgeous. Carol works daily with women. Her specialty is midlife and up. And she does that on the daily, guys. So welcome, Carol. Thank you for being thank here. You. Thank you. Thank you. You're I, welcome. I think that in our planning to do this um, segment for the ageless woman, um, you and I talked about, okay, people pretty much know who I am. Let's talk about something and get the interaction going. And what we want to talk about is what have you been doing since March 1 in our COVID um, in place, at home, um, quarantine, lockdown, whatever you want to call it. Um, what have you been doing? What have you been experiencing for the last six months? And in those six months, how many times with all of these experiences have you moved the process to your silver linings? So that's what we wanted to jump in and talk about silver linings. A silver lining is a pretty powerful thing. It's attitude. It's getting past what's happening and looking at possibilities of why it might have happened for your good. They're always there. That's why that concept, Silver Linings, is so popular. It was a movie, The Silver Lining Playbook. Um, everyone talks in some 
time in their life about silver linings. And um, the book has 25 questions, starting with when you're very young and hearing the first time that you're beautiful, thinking about the, the women in your life that how they felt about gray hair and how they felt about wrinkles and how they felt about over 50. And, and it moves through experiences, including uh, the yaya, the group experiences of women with women till you get to the 25th question. And by that time you have unraveled to your silver linings, at least some of them. So go ahead. So the silver linings would be finding the positive in life. Absolutely. Let's give them, let's give them some examples. And what we want to do in this interaction, we would like to have them post there, if they will, uh, on Facebook, uh, if they would be so kind as to share what kinds of things they've been going through. We know there's all kinds because of the posts that everyone's doing. Um, and I'll give you a couple of mine. I've been accident prone during the last uh, five months, six months. Accident That's interesting. Prone. Yes, very interesting. And um, I am in the process of doing one of those losses. Uh, let's go back to the other piece of research that made me get into the silver lining aspect. Medical research shows that once a woman hits her mid years, that her losses start stacking up. And we're not even talking menopause. We're talking losses of job, home, income, uh, husband, parents, child, friends, and as we get older, what happens, all those things start compounding. And then we start looking at the medical reasons for all those losses. And so um, let's take a look at it. We're in the middle of something that most of us have never experienced before. We're staying at home. If we go out, we have to... Uh, man up for protection. Um, we can't hug the people we love. Um, there are things that we can't do, large groups. I know all of our events that we plan for the East Coast and West Coast, right now we can't do them. We had them planned for April. Um, think about the people that can't see our age that have family in nursing homes can't see their parents. They have to go to the window. I know what, go ahead. Yeah. It's put a strain on, it's put a, it's put an unusual strain on everybody. World grandchildren, grandchildren. Yes. Travel. You don't know if you leave where your, your, your home base is when you get to wherever you're going, has something changed? Has there been a, quarantine for 14 days once you get there? Um, has that country decided that Americans can't come in or vice versa? Uh, I mean, this isn't just America. It's all over the world. In fact, we have women from all over the world <clears throat> in our book, France, Italy, and so forth. So let's talk about the things, too, that you're used to having done. Some women are still coloring their hair, uh, nails, um, <clears throat> all those self cares, yoga, those who go to classes, um, exercise. Um, the list goes on and on. And if you were involved in major projects during this time, let's say you were involved in moving or you're building a house or you're in an apartment and no work and you've got to decide what are you going to do, you know? So let's, let's empower our viewers and, and, um, and, and I'm sorry, but we don't have any interaction here. I'm not sure whether we just, you know, we lost our viewers with rescheduling or if they're having trouble 
uh, figuring out how to join the conversation in StreamYard, and that could be too. So um, we might just have to have this conversation without the without the added input. But I'd love to to you know brainstorm some ideas on how to um, thrive and have those silver linings. So I'd like to ask you with the with all the things that we have had to. Um, oh, look at this! I've got something from Tracy. In light awesome. of all the Yes. Oh, this is the first time I've seen a really good uh, pop up here. There must be a certain way in how to do it when you're on StreamYard. So this is from Tracy. In light of all the restrictions, I'm in a fight for creativity to see all I can do and be while being extremely protective of myself and others. So, Tracy, I have to ask, how long did it take you to get to that silver lining? What kinds of things were going on? What feelings were you having? What interactions were you having with others? That's a whole different ball game. Some wives and husbands aren't used to being together nonstop, children and families. I mean, all of that. So tell us more that the kinds of things that happened to you, Tracy. And yes, maybe there were. Yes, you just popped in. Hi, ladies. Yeah. Um, hi, honey. So good, so glad that you jumped on. Um, hey, Tracy. Do you wanna ask her the question again? Yes, so Tracy, this started in March. We're into this thing six months, March 1. So what were the things that were happening to you? She says to two weeks to get there. She said okay. two weeks, two weeks to get there. Good for you, Tracy. Can she tell us the aspects around it? What, if she will share what happened? Uh, she crashed just like everybody else, she says. I crashed just like everybody else. But, she, but she, she's, she's adaptable, I think, from the conversations that I've had with Tracy. She, she adapts. So Tracy is an author around all of this, too. If you read her book, Unapologetically, Unapolog Unapologetically Gray. Gray. <laughs> yes. OK, so let's. Um, let's talk about a couple of things that I. Good examples. Um, Sugar Roman, one of our silvers. And I took a one day, 24 hour trip. I picked her up when she lives in South Carolina and we drove to a, and this was after the first lifting of everything, right? And we drove to a mermaid um, flea market in Southport. And it took us six hours almost to get there. It was raining and uh, it had to get to her and then cross over. And I had my dog with me, my big 60 pound dog in the back. And, um, but we were determined. And then when we got there, the lady opened, we had an appointment. She was not open. So we were 45 minutes late because of the rain blah, blah, blah. So we were feeling the restrictions of not only being out the first time, you know, the restrictions were lifted. It was raining. Um, we had an appointment to go to a retail store. Think about that one. Wow. <laughs> and it, she was wonderful. She uh, went ahead and opened and then, you know, earlier and took care of us. And then we got in the car and drove to our hotel in Myrtle Beach. Again, I had my 60 pound um, sheepdog rescue and um, we had to stay in a hotel with for dogs. Beautiful hotel. Um, we went to dinner on the ocean again. We're on. We're, we're sitting outside on a pier, and everybody's got on mask. And the wind's blowing, and the waiters are coming. But we have our mask on every time they come up. You got to put your mask back on. Um, then we of course went back to the room the next, and we had lots of conversation, lots of um, 
silver lining conversation. And then we get back in the car and drive back the next day. And um, for me, that was one of those breaking times. And we'd have to talk to, um, to Sugar about her experience with it. But the silver linings we were picking up as we went, we felt strange about the differences with the requirements that were asked of us. In the car, we were not six feet away, but we didn't keep that on the whole time. And then we thought about that, and we were both kind of freaking out about that. It was just very interesting. So, uh, yeah. Tracy says here that I had to change mindset quickly. Yes. You do have to change. You have to spin your mindset quickly because um, I think that if you if you concentrate, if you focus on all the things that are different, if you focus on the restrictions, if you focus on the, the I can't do this and I can't do that, um, it, it's really, it's, it's harmful, I think. I, I think that it makes it worse. Um, yes, we have to acknowledge it. Yes, it's unfortunate. Yes, all those things. But um, for me personally, but I'm... I'm one of those optimists, you know, that I know that it'll pass eventually. And so I just have that very adaptable personality and I have faith and faith has just really helped me glide through this. Uh, I do what I'm supposed to do. And, um, you know, I abide by the rules, even though I might not agree with all of them, I abide by them. And, um, you know, I hug my pod, my pod and I, we hug. You know, so, uh, I mean, we don't. That was another thing. We both were huggers, but we, yes. were, we weren't hugging. Yes, no, yes. It, it's strange at first, you know, people are going like this instead of going like this. Mm -hmm. um, I did start up my yoga class again, and um, I was respectful towards my students, and I, I let them know ahead of time that I would not be wearing a mask. Um, they, you know, I gave them. You know, if you want to bring your own materials, that's fine. If you want to wear a mask, that's fine. Know that I'm not going to be. And so um, I won't be offended one way or another. Um, I just couldn't see myself being able to do my practice with, with the mask on. So um, it's very awkward, especially when you're instructing and let's, breathing. Yeah. Let's talk about some of the things that I've seen we don't have these people on. Let's talk about some of the things I've seen, the transitions. Um, having a parent in assisted living. Mm. I, I have watched women and men, Silvers, create a beautiful experience. One, in fact, uh, is a bubble man. And he took bubbles, his bubble machines, oh out in front of his mom's window at, to her room and did bubbles. That's beautiful. I love that. And you could see the kid come out in her. Can you imagine? Um, That's an awesome idea. Yeah. Um, I've watched, um, I've seen some of the girls moving and I've watched their, you know, actually physically moving. And I've watched uh, like one of them, she, she loves to cook, but she doesn't give herself permission to do those kind of things. Well, she has during these last six months and she's putting it online. She's putting it, people are asking for her recipes. Um, look at the ones who are doing some kind of entertainment. They're singing or so um, creative. I mean, just. All kinds of things, right? Um, yes. The concept of Zoom. There, some families are uh, getting on Zoom from across the world on the multi-Zoom. And think about that silver lining for going forward with families. I mean, mm -hmm. oh, absolutely. that's pretty huge. Here's from Tracy. Yes. I had to reframe my freedom or I was going to lose my mind. My husband and I created an atmosphere of peace in our home. We rested and also revamped personal and professional practices. I love that. We worked, we worked to make some dreams come true at home. 
Isn't that beautiful? That is beautiful. That's so you know, beautiful. I um I watch, I'm gonna talk about my sister for a minute. She is 18 months older than I am. And she is a business owner still. She's 71, a be big time business and she never would slow down because she had so much going on in the business well with what happened with the restrictions and you had to stay at home she and her husband had to totally revamp what they were doing and their clients were schools their clients are out you know we're talking you know lots of people are seeing this where their client base all of a sudden is not their client base anymore. Well, I watched Myra, my sister, and the first few weeks she was having a real hard time. And then all of a sudden she started mellowing. And then it moved from mellow mm. to creative. And then it moved to somewhere in all that acceptance. And I'm thinking, wow, that's pretty huge. And I, I've seen that with others yes. you know, on social media. Yes, that is. I think that's been the most beautiful silver lining to this tragic circumstances that the Im incredible creativity that's come out of it for a lot of people. Now, un unfortunately, it hasn't created the best circumstances for people in other types of situations. And that's really unfortunate. And I really, I pray for those people that, you know, it's become so much of a survival challenge for them in this kind of time but my goodness if if we could you know get creative and find new ideas and not just the ideas of blowing bubbles you know making somebody happy from a distance um all the musical things we're seeing online that are so cool and your you know, sister i have seen online what you're talking about i know we're not getting all of them but i have seen online and in personal experiences talking with people that shift um i you know i have the nonprofit, and i have a dear old friend who is my nonprofit um uh, go to and i asked her how things are going she's retired now but she has one client and um Interestingly, it's been around a really long time, and it's they've gone to a county in education. This is what they do. They will pay for the education all the way through college for any of their, from I think it's 15-year-old on, and um, they provide them everything they need. And she said, this has been astounding. The kids who do not have at home what they need in education. Yeah. Yes. And they, they're working overtime. They're getting computers out there. They're getting parents trained. They're uh, working with those students. They're recreating from the restrictions. Look how people are teaming up to help. We wouldn't have seen. I mean, I think we're really seeing another side to people, to human beings, and how they really want to help. I think that from what I can see and the experiences that are being shared with me, that while people are feeling kind of stuffed, uh, they're ready for that shift, something to happen, just about everybody is seeing, you know, I don't need as much of something that I thought I did. And you know what? This is more important. Being out in nature, being with my family, cooking together. Um, Carol, it's kind of like how it was when we were in, like when we were kids, like in the 50s. Yep. You know, yeah. people are doing board games again with their families and they're out at the park I, i've been seeing people with like picnic play blankets on in like grassy areas i'm like i haven't seen that done in a long time those are the kind of things i remember when i was a kid picnicking and, with the family yeah and yeah. um ideas you know i see uh friends of mine who are artists that uh 
their creativity has just gone just wow. I mean, the things that they're doing. Um, one of the girls here in Charlotte who is an expert artist, and she is, um, uh, Rosalie is her name. And Rosalie's neighbor, who is in his 90s, says, I look out the window and I can't see any flowers. Well, her old, uh, the garage, the whole side faces him. So she got out and she <laughs> created the whole side of the garage with beautiful flowers. Oh, oh big. my goodness. So when he looks out his window, he has flowers. Oh, that is amazing. How cool is that? That's silver lining work. Yeah. yeah. Um, don't want to get political. Life is so much easier if you can find the silver linings to things, you know, and I don't care what the situation is, you know, even out of darkness comes light, don't you think? Yes. And, you know, in my practice, and I'll just say this a couple of minutes here, uh, when I had my practice in energy medicine, someone who was having a hard time with this, and that's who we're speaking with now, um, how do you stop thinking about what's not working and look at what's working and what's not working. Yes. And what one of the greatest things I think to do is to list on a piece of paper, all the things that have happened to you in your life, one list of all the bad things and one list of all the good things and go the first one on the not good things and find something good. They look at me like I have several heads when I do that, but anyway, find some good. And then, go to the good list and find something bad. So then you start seeing that's interesting all attitude. And once you can go through an exercise like that, then you realize, oh, this is my choice. Do I, you know, so if I want to be without silver linings and think someone else knows how to have silver linings and I don't, well, just don't do those kind of things. Don't think creatively about what could be but if you want them and want to be happy and healthy think about it you know one of the big things that i have thought about during this whole six months is by now anyone who didn't know how to take care of themselves with their immune system surely they've taken that on as a silver lining all the things they can do, depending on what kinds of, whether they're, <laughs> you know, I have, or whatever. I have preached on that topic for so many years. Keep your immune system healthy. Keep your, I don't care how well you eat. Everybody needs probiotics. I'm such a fan of that. You know, it just, it's so important to keep your immune system healthy. And not only with the foods and the supplements and yeah, that, that matters. But what really matters is how you view life and how you manage the stressful situations because life is stressful. It's just, that's how it is. Um, I don't mean it in a bad way because not all stress is bad, but when it tips over the slope and becomes chronic and then it's bad. And then your health gets compromised. And then your immune system gets compromised. Exactly. So one last thing I'd like to share. Um, during this six months, um, I have been going through what happens with one of those losses. My mom passed away in February. And we began in March working with and dissolving her estate. and. Um, my mother and dad were incredible, active, and creative. So their house, and they didn't throw anything away. And to some, that might be a negative. It wasn't to us. It was incredible to learn more about them and learn more about ourselves as we move through these things. Questions answered. It was awesome. But I, I need silver linings. Yeah. Um, but. I've just been through and pretty much now getting to, to the end, but a major loss and all that comes with it, the, the family home, you know, we'll be leaving, you know, you know, the whole thing. Um, 
And again, I think it's a choice. And, and as people, yeah, some people it takes them longer to process their grief or process their emotions. But boy, if you can. And you know what? It does affect your health if you don't. It oh, comes absolutely. Out, it comes out as pain. Yep. And if you can process, you'll feel yourself moving through, much like getting over a cold or having a simple cold and getting over. But the grief is lungs. And um, uh, it's interesting, the aches and pains in the body, you know, after when you're processing what what's happening. But you, when you're done, you feel lighter and more connected with humanity and more connected with nature and with yourself. Another, another silver lining. Um, so I think we're about ready to. Yeah, I, Tracy just has another comment too. So I, I wanted to read that. Many people, including us, have turned our yards into a paradise. We're even growing gardens and herbs and cooking and eating outside. I love that. And praying, and praying and having more talks out there in the Texas heat. We sleep better at night. Yay, Tracy. Aww. That's awesome. That's so beautiful. That yes. is. Yes. yes. That is. I love it. I do too. I do too. So everyone, I hope those who have um, listened and those who will hopefully tune in later, you know, if you want to comment, just hit the replay, like hashtag replay so that we know that you're commenting. Um, we'll be sure to get in there and, and uh, touch base with you. But um, I, I hope that we've inspired you in some way to look for those silver linings. That is a major part of the work that Carol does. And um, I'm, I'm grateful to her for that. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. And thank you for, for what you're doing in this work. We're teaming up together and just uh, trying to bring some light into the world. And Tracy, she's a huge inspiration too. Tracy, um, she just said, I hope to inspire others. Yes, please. Uh, I'm, I'm sure your neighbors are watching you going, oh, look at, look at that happy family over there. I love it. Being inspired, she's an inspiration, yes. Um, that's awesome. Tracy was my last guest who, who came on and, and really uh, told us about her, her book, Unapologetically Gray. And um, she and her husband just did a uh, a class. Yes, they did a workshop and online. That's, mm -hmm. There's so many powerful women, men and women, both uh, out there, just really doing their best to to bring energy into the world and to bring healing into the world and to their friends and their families and clients. And so, I encourage all of you that if you're having a rough time with with life, um, particularly now, to reach out. There's so many, so many coaches out there that can help you. Seriously. I hope you'll do that. And find and your silver linings. Find your silver linings and come see us in one of our groups, you know. Um, yes, I've we have lots Sterling of groups. Silver Sisters, uh, Branding Silver Linings, Bill Rising. Debbie has The Ageless Woman. Um, Tracy has unapologetically gray susan esco um, has die free to be me there's, die free uh, to be me yeah uh, there's a lot of good ones out there sterling so uh, i'm sorry silver sisters international um the silver circle um, yeah and if you're not silver yet no worries there are so many have beautiful to. groups out there for women i encourage you you know if you feel like you want to bond with other people community is so important right now guys it, it really is and and if you can find a tribe that you're really connected with that's private that's why i keep my my group private so people feel safe in there they can say what they want to say and, and they know it's not going to go all over facebook um but just do that you know if you're if you want to go silver we have tons of groups for you you know if you want to let your gray come in natural and be gorgeous doing it uh yeah, and feel good about yourself. There's lots of groups out there with some amazing women doing that. Um, otherwise, just find a group that suits you. Well, you know, our our group is not about, although it's Sterling Silver Sisters, it's all ages, and it's about getting to the Sterling, getting to your silver linings. Is that Bell Rising? Bell Rising? Well, Bell Rising, Bell Rising is a nonprofit. Oh, and okay. Sterling Silver Sisters is the Facebook group. 
Gotcha. Okay. And we'll provide the links to, so you can connect with, uh, with Carol, if you would like, um, after we awesome. get off here and I go back into the group, I'll post your contact information. Thank you. And thanks again for the beginnings. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you so much for coming on. I enjoyed you. Yes. I did too. Thank you. And Tracy, thank you. Yes. Thank you, Tracy, for jumping on. I appreciate you. All right, all. Have a Bye nice night. Now. Bye. Yes, you too. Bye now.